Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to share with you some really cool information about the connection between vitamin D deficiency and psychotic disorders in children. Uh, recently at the uh, annual APA meeting, there was an interesting study presented uh, by some researchers, and what they did is they looked at uh, children that required residential care. So these are kids with severe psychotic disorders. And what they found is in that 21% of the kids in the study that they did, 21% had vitamin D levels less than 20 nanograms per deciliter. Now that is extremely deficient vitamin D levels. Now what they also found is that the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in kids with psychotic disorders was 43%. So what their point is, there's, a, there's an unequivocal, undeniable connection between vitamin D deficiency and these kids that have these severe psychotic disorders. Now what the study authors didn't do, which I'm going to fill in for, is kind of give you some reasons why that happened and what you should really do with this information. Well, vitamin D, there are vitamin D receptors in the brain, and vitamin D affects brain development. And if you look around some of my other uh, posts, you'll probably find some information on that. But there's some other reasons why vitamin D levels uh, could be affecting, you know, how they could cause psychotic disorders. Vitamin D is extremely important for the regulation of your immune system. Vitamin D deficiency is, you know, really associated with all different kinds of autoimmune disorders, right? Autoimmune means the immune system is attacking the body. It can, it can attack the brain, it can attack uh, any organ, any tissue. Now, that could be one reason. When you have low vitamin D levels, your immune system can dysregulate and literally become imbalanced and become overzealous and can start attacking things that it shouldn't attack. It can lead to what we call neural or neuro inflammation. That's inflammation inside the brain, inflammation in the central nervous system. In fact, a lot of researchers believe, shouldn't say a lot, some researchers believe that vitamin D deficiency is the cause of autism. Now, I don't believe that, but it's certainly the cause for several cases that I've seen. Now, how would a child get to be that vitamin D deficient? Is it they, they don't go out in the sun enough? Probably not. I'll give you some other reasons why this could happen, and this is what I want you to listen to. A vitamin D deficiency okay, is often caused by malabsorption. Now, why would a child not be able to absorb things through their intestines? And I'll tell you, the number one reason is gluten sensitivity. I've said this a million times, and I'll say it a million and one times. The best thing you can do for a person that is diagnosed with some type of uh, psychiatric disorder, if there's only one thing you could do, you put them on a gluten-free diet and you put them on a dairy-free diet. And there's a lot of information out there. I've made some posts on this before. But if you have an inflammatory response in your gut, okay, you don't absorb things correctly. I can't tell you how many cases. I've lost count of how many autistic spectrum kids had vitamin D levels in the, in the toilet like this, less than 20, that when we corrected their diet and did some other things, their vitamin D levels got normal, not just normal, but more optimal, okay? So that's one, probably a very big reason why these kids have vitamin D deficiencies. The other thing is they, they may have autoimmune disorders. There are certain genetic propensities that make you uh, not be able to use and store, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, vitamin D the way that you should, and you end up with a unregulated immune system or disordered brain development. Okay, so what are you going to do about this? So here's the thing. If you've got a child that's got some sort of psychotic disorder, and I don't know if you're, you would even be watching this right now, but if you know someone that's got a child, you know, that's got residential care, they've got to get checked for vitamin D deficiency. They've got to find a doctor who understands that, hey, just because they're in some uh, residential care facility doesn't mean that you can't do something for them, that they couldn't maybe get out. So you've got to find a doctor that understands, we've got to check vitamin D, and then we've got to supplement it accordingly if it's deficient, okay? The second thing you've got to do is if if you don't have a child with any type of psychotic disorder, but I got a child with ADHD or autism or something that's not quite, you know, psychotic, but could be, you know, bipolar, depression, you got to get their vitamin D levels checked. And really, what you got to do is you got to find out if they're gluten sensitive. But really, you could just save your money and just put them on a gluten-free and dairy-free diet because it's not going to hurt them. In fact, it's probably one of the best things that could happen to them. Uh, and third, you got to find a doctor who can help guide you through all this stuff because this can get fairly complex. What I wanted to do today was to share with you more information that shows that vitamin D affects the brain. It affects brain development. It affects brain function. Now, please, don't just go run out and start supplementing vitamin D because if your child's got low vitamin D, we've got to figure out why. You've got to be a little bit of a detective. You've got to find somebody that can help you figure out why does your child have, have vitamin D deficiency. They have, do they have an autoimmune condition? Do they have gluten sensitivity? Um, what's the deal? So that's what I want you to do with this information, okay? Do some investigating.